I'm Deke McClellan, and these are seven killer tricks that every Photoshop pro should know. First, a question. Do you know Photoshop? If so, here's a bold promise. In the next few minutes, I'll show you a few things that you did not know before. Because what follows aren't just seven killer tricks that every Photoshop pro should know. These are seven ways to work better, faster, and achieve higher quality results as befitting a Photoshop pro. Trick one is to colorize any layer with a color overlay effect. And so let's say I want to take these rays and make them a brilliant gold while keeping the frame nice and blue. The typical unwise approach is to create a hue saturation adjustment layer so easy, just turn on the colorize checkbox, dial in a hue value such as 45 degrees for yellow, I'll crank the saturation up to 100% and we have gold. Two problems. First, I've colorized everything, including the frame. and so so I'll click on the hamburger icon in the top right corner of the layers panel and choose create clipping mask at which point the adjustment is clipped inside the rays and the frame is safe. Problem number two, hue saturation invariably affects luminance depending on the hue value. So if I crank that hue value to purple we get a much darker effect whereas yellow is quite bright. To see how bright it is I'll change the blend mode from normal to color at which point the colors settle down. That's a lot of work. So much easier just to go ahead and select the layer and apply a color overlay effect like so. I'll dial in a color, same color by the way, 45 degrees saturation and brightness are both 100% and then I'll change the blend mode from normal which replaces the color with color so that we're colorizing the image at which point we are done and as you can see the effect is identical to applying an adjustment layer but it involves a heck of a lot less work for some of you, trick two is going to blow your mind. Transparency shapes layer. All I want to do is create a glow around this central seal. And so I'll click on the FX icon and choose, in this case, inner glow. I've selected the same color. You can see that if I click on it. 45 degrees for the hue, saturation, and brightness are both set to 100%. The blend mode is screen. I've cranked the opacity up to 100%. I've also cranked the size to its maximum of 250 pixels, and I've taken the choke value up to 20%. No sense in being subtle. Notice I've not only traced around the seal, but I've traced the inside edge of the frame as well. It's not the frame's fault. If I turn it off, I still have that glow. And so I'll go ahead and double click on the thumbnail for that raised layer. And just to better keep track of things, I'm gonna turn off the color overlay. And notice right here in the layers panel that I have a mask associated with this layer. That mask exactly traces around the seal. Notice this checkbox right here, layer mask hides effects. If I turn it on, then I will hide the glow around the mask, which gets rid of the glow around the seal, which is exactly not what I want. And so I'll turn that checkbox back off. Notice this next checkbox up, transparency shapes layer. That is selected by default and it tells Photoshop to shape the layer effect to the contents of the layer. That is not what we want in this case, so I'll turn the checkbox off and we now have a glow only exclusively around the seal. Admit it, in the past you didn't even know what this checkbox did. Now you'll be using it all the time. Trick three is another tricky checkbox, blend interior effects as group. I'm gonna go ahead and again turn on the color overlay effect and notice it goes all over the place. And that's because with transparency shapes layer turned off, the yellow has nothing to contain it. Turn on the frame layer and even it turns yellow, just like that adjustment layer without a clipping mask. The solution, double click on the thumbnail for the raise layer and see this first checkbox, blend interior effects as group. Both color overlay and inner glow occur entirely within the confines of a layer, making them both interior effects. So turn on the checkbox to contain those effects and click OK. That gives me time to pass along a meta trick. See how my bevel and emboss effects trace along the inside and outside of the frame? I just want that inside edge, so I'll double click on an empty portion of the frame layer to once again bring up that dialog box and turn off transparency shapes layer. Just like that, the outside effects disappear.
Hey, real quick, do you wish that instead of seven killer tricks that I had ten? Well, I do, and they're every bit as good as the ones you've seen so far. It's just that tricks eight, nine, and ten are at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to seven killer tricks that every Photoshop pro should know. For you retouching enthusiasts, we have trick four, non-destructive dodge and burn. And so I want to brighten this woman's eyes and teeth, maybe darken the eyeshadow as well. I could use the dodge and burn tools. Dodge brightens, burn darkens. However, they're destructive, meaning that they make permanent pixel level modifications. That's no way to go, which is why you're better off using the brush tool, which you can get by pressing the B key. Make your foreground color white and then create a new layer. That's the magic of this. I'll call it eyes and teeth and click OK. And now the beauty of this is because I'm working on an independent layer, I can be as sloppy as I like. Now what you want to do is change the blend mode for that layer to overlay. That's going to give us a glowing effect. So take the opacity value down to 20%. Anywhere up to 30% is going to work out nicely. Now you can go back with the eraser tool and fix your modifications. Notice I can erase away the lips, for example, and I can erase those flesh tones around the eyes as well in order to create a more picture perfect effect. Now I'll create another layer and I'll call this one eyeshadow. I'll press the X key to swap the foreground and background colors. So I'm painting with black. I'll grab my brush tool and I'm going to paint over the eye, above the eye that is, and under the eyebrow. Very sloppy job once again. Change the blend mode this time to soft light. Ends up working best for burning. And then I'll take the opacity value down to 20%, even as low as 10%. Works out nicely. This is before and this is after. Remember that you can dodge with the overlay mode and burn with soft light. Now for trick five, the best way to select eyes. And so here we are looking at the model with brighter teeth. I'm going to redo the eyes, however, because this is a better way to work by switching to the elliptical marquee key tool best tool for this purpose and now you want to draw a selection that aligns to the top eyelid and you can use the space bar by the way to move the selection on the fly like so then release and now press the shift and alt keys that shift and option on the mac so that you're seeing an x next to your cursor and draw along the bottom eyelid like so again use the space bar for alignment purposes and then when you release because you have the shift and alt keys down, shift and option on the Mac, you are going to find the intersection of those two selection outlines, which describes the eye. Now make sure the eyes and teeth layer is selected. And because white is my background color, here's another trick. I can fill the selection with white by pressing control backspace. That's going to be command delete on the Mac. And you get this very accurate selection right here. I'll do it again because we have another eye, but I'll do it quickly. So shift alt or shift option drag in order to find the intersection and then control backspace or command delete on the Mac to fill that selection outline with white. Now it's not going to look exactly right. And so what you want to do, I think this is the best way to work is to switch to the smudge tool and then Make sure that sample all layers is turned off. You don't want that. You don't want finger painting to be turned on either. You can make your cursor bigger by pressing the right bracket key. And so I'll just go ahead and drag in order to smear these guys up a little bit. And then I'll reduce the size of my cursor and drag like so in order to move the whites of the eyes out. And that way we attain perfect eyes that we were able to select using the elliptical marquee tool combined with the shift and alt or shift and option keys. I suppose trick six is actually for meta tricks because we're going to see four different ways to jump a layer. And I say jump because these are keyboard shortcuts that you should know about that involve the letter J. And so consider this thumbnail in which my head slightly overlaps the text so as not to impede the legibility, but just to create a little bit of of integration. How did I make it? Well, I'll get rid of my head so I can recreate it for you. I'll turn off the text 
and I'll select the butterflies layer that contains me and the butterflies merged together. Now I'll select my head using the object selection tool, easiest way to go. I'll just marquee my face like so, and a moment later, Photoshop will create an automatic, albeit rough, selection outline. And now what I want to do is copy that selection to an independent layer by jumping it, which you do by pressing Control J or Command J on the Mac. Notice we have a new layer one right here, and it is independent of butterflies, as you can see. Problem is, it was automatically named. Let's say you're feeling fastidious and you want to name the layer as you jump it, in which case you would press Control Alt J or Command Option J on the Mac. And now I can just go ahead and name that guy in my head. Click OK, drag it above the text, turn the text back on, and we have that thumbnail. Now let's say instead of copying the selection, you want to cut it. In that case, I'll go ahead and undo a few steps right here, and I'll press Control shift j That's Command-Shift-J on the Mac. We end up with an independent layer once again, but now if I turn it off, we have a hole into the black background. Problem is, of course, that it was automatically named. If you want to name it as you cut it, then I'll just go ahead and undo a few steps there, and I'll press Control-Shift-Alt-J. Command Shift Option J on the Mac. So you press all the modifier keys and then go ahead and name this guy in my head, as you can see. Drag it to above the text, turn the text back on, turn off my head for a moment. You'll see there's a black hole in the background. And that is four different ways to jump a layer using different keyboard shortcuts based on the J key. Okay, you got me. A few of you already knew how to jump a layer, but jumping can create problems, which is why I offer trick seven, alt or option drag to copy a layer, which is as much about how to pull off this trick as why. And so here's a more indicative version of the thumbnail. This is more or less how I put it together. And notice down here at the bottom is a layer I created in Adobe Firefly. And then I replaced this guy's goofy face with my own goofy face. I added some hair using generative fill and then I added the text on top, which is masked. So rather than putting my face in front of the text, I masked it like so. Now, more important for this trick is these three layers right here, which are all clipped inside of my face. So we've got the spots layer, which is some spot healing. We've got this green layer, which is for my eyes. And then this light layer, which is lightening the face. Now watch my face as I turn all of these on. You can see my irises turn green and my face brightens ever so slightly. Now, I'm looking at that thinking my eyes are greener than that. And so what I want to do is grab this green layer right here and make a copy of it. But notice these little arrows that indicate how the clipping is occurring. If I press Control or Command J, I not only create a copy of that green layer, I break the clipping group as it were. And now that this lighten layer is clipped inside the new green layer, it's not affecting my face. Notice if I turn it on or off, that is, it doesn't make any difference. So that's not what I want to do. In which case, this could be much more complicated. You could have all kinds of stuff going on inside of your clipping group. Just go ahead and press Control or Command Z as many times as it takes to undo what you've done. And then, as opposed to, to jumping the layer, press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and drag it like so. And because you have Alt or Option down, you're going to see a double arrowhead cursor, which shows you that you're going to make a duplicate of that layer. And that's much more flexible than jumping because I can move it to any spot that I want. In fact, I could keep it inside the group. I could Alt or Option drag it down so I don't have to jump up. I can duplicate down like so and keep it inside that grouping structure at which point I have these incredibly crazy piercing green eyes just like I do in real life. And so if jumping a layer creates problems inside of your clipping groups, alter option drag the layer instead.